Welcome everyone to an exciting Adobe Illustrator Pen Tool practice tutorial. I am your host, Eli Sarantopoulos. The Pen Tool being one of the most challenging tools to use, since it is hard to know where to place and drag anchor point handles, this is where the box method comes into play. So to demonstrate that, I will create a circle using the ellipse tool. Adobe Illustrator goes ahead and creates four anchor points with uniform handles that they're equally spaced and balanced at 90 degree angles between anchor points. In addition, there's a box around it and wherever the box touches the circle, that's where the anchor points are positioned. And that's the approach we're going to follow, placing anchor points using the box method, adding horizontal and vertical guides at 90 degree angles, just where the ornamental graphic touches. With Adobe Illustrator and a new file open, the first I'm going to do is place the ornament that I'm providing below the video description inside the artboard. So for that, inside the file menu, I will use the place command, select the ornament, click on the template choice, and then just click to place. Great. Adobe Illustrator goes ahead and creates this locked layer, dimming the template graphic and by the way, we can just double click inside the layer thumbnail and inside the layers options, I will actually dim this even more down to 30% and just click OK. Now make sure that you switch back to layer one because this template ornament here is a locked layer, so you won't be able to use any tools. So inside the layer one, we already know the next step, which is going to be adding horizontal and vertical guides at 90 degree angles, just where the ornament touches, which means we're going to rename this to guides to make sure that we use a separate layer for that. And you're going to see why this will come handy. Great. So I will go inside the view menu, rulers, and show the rulers. That's one thing. Then using the move tool, we're going to position the pointer mouse here anywhere on the top ruler for a horizontal guide or anywhere on the left ruler for the vertical guides. So in this case, the first horizontal guide will be just right here. So click and drag, and this is where the ornament touches, right? And now the guides, that we can place just where the ornament touches is right here. And then I'm going to create another one just around here because I want to have a nice corner. I know this is a very short distance, but this is how it's going to work nicely. And then we're going to go all the way down, create another horizontal guide around here because we need to work on this curved corner here on this nice corner. So we need to have a nice curved path. The next place that we can place a horizontal ruler, a horizontal guide would be just right here. Again, whatever the ornament touches. Another vertical guide right there. You see we have a nice corner here. And then we also need to deal with this nice corner. So for that, we're going to use another guide right there. All right and another one right here. There we go. The rest is easy, actually. We don't need to create any more additional guides. Now, by default, the guides are locked. So in this case, go up to the View menu, Guides, and Unlock Your Guides. And that's why I created a separate layer for that. So in this case, I always keep it unlocked. All right. So when I'm done placing the guides the way I want to place them, all right, the only thing I'm doing is to just lock this layer. See that? Great. Then we're going to need, of course, a new layer. So at the bottom of the layers panel, we're going to click on the plus icon to create a new vector layer. Double click, and I will rename this curves because that's where we're going to actually start creating this nice curved path. All right, so we're ready to go to the next step and create, lay down the foundation of the anchor points. 
All right, so we've got the guides. We also have the empty curves layer. So we're ready to go and create the foundation of the anchor points. Let me go ahead and zoom in a bit here. I just want to show you something that this here, this actually reminds me of a curve, a circular curve path. So instead of using the pen tool, which we can absolutely do that, it will be easier to create this using the ellipse tool. So we're just going to go ahead and use the ellipse tool. And I'm going to draw this from the center. So Alt Shift, Option Shift. At the same time, I'm going to hold the space bar on the keyboard to just place this here, position it here, release that, continue drawing this, press the space bar, keep drawing this, and position around here. All right, great. Now, we don't need the fill color, so inside the properties, I'm just going to remove the fill color, we just have a stroke of one point, which is great. And then back on the layers, and looking at the layer preview color, I'm just going to double click on the layer thumbnail, and I'm gonna change this green color to brown. That would be easier for us to see, that's one thing. Another thing is I need to create a cut right there. So for that, I will use the scissors tool. Let me zoom in a bit, create just one cut right there. Then I'm going to switch to the direct selection tool, Marquee selects this anchor point, press the delete key on the keyboard to remove it. Marquee select this anchor point, delete that as well. And now we also have a leftover. Now just make sure that you double check inside the layers panel. As you can see, here is the empty path. So it's always a good idea to double check your work. In this case, I'm just going to remove this as well. Then I'm going to switch to the pen tool and we need to continue from here and continue this curve. So I will hover over here till I see the forward slash, that means we can continue. Then I will hold down the Alt key or the Option key and just drag out a control handle. And what happens here basically is we are creating a cusp point. A cusp point is an anchor point with independent control handles. This is one handle, and this is the other handle, right? So the next point will be right there. So I'm just going to click and drag, hold on the shift key, because again, we're doing things in 90 degree increments here. All right, you don't need to go all the way here. We're going to fix this later. The next is going to be right there. You can just follow the curve here. All right, just gonna move down all the way here and we're going to create this nice curve path. So click and drag, hold on the shift key, create this smooth point, go right across, do the same, create this nice corner here. Don't worry about how it looks, this is very normal. Just going to lay down this, another anchor point here, another smooth point right there, and then click and drag, hold on the shift key. You don't need to extend this all the way, Gonna go right there, do the same. The next is gonna be right there. Click and drag, hold on the shift key at the same time. Hold down the Alt key or the Option key. So that would be Alt Shift, Option Shift. Just gonna move right there, release everything. The next is gonna be right here. So click and drag upwards. Hold down the shift key as you do, right there. Go right across. Do the same, hold on the shift key as you do. There we go, that's a nice curve here. And same here, go right across right there. Follow this path, that's okay, it's fine. We don't need to create nine degrees here. But what we need to do here is we need to create, again, a cusp point, which means we're going to hold down the Alt key or the Option key. We're gonna change the direction of this control handle and just gonna go right there, click and drag. Again, we're going to create another cusp point. You can hold down the Alt key or the Option key, change the direction of this control handle right there, and just move it right here where it says intersect and click once. There you go. See that? This is where we're going for. Now we are ready to go to the next step. And basically, 
fix all these paths here, all these curves, by using the direct selection tool and pulling out the control handles. All right, great. We're almost there. So let's go ahead and zoom in here a bit. We're going to grab the direct selection tool and I'm just going to click to get to the control handles and just pull those out. Do the same for every anchor point here till you make things very smooth. Okay, you're going to have to spend a little time, of course, to create all these. All right. Perhaps this one here, I can extend it all the way. See how nice the curve is. As for this one, I'll do the same. I'm holding the shift key as I do. There we go. This one here, I'm just going to pull this down. Select this one. Use this control handle. Now, this is not correct yet. That's okay. We're going to fix it later. I'm holding the shift key as I do. But then I need to pull this handle out. This one too. Bring this in. And so on. Okay, you get the idea what we are doing here. Now, let's go ahead and fix this. So I'm just going to click on this anchor point and then just slight rotate it because there's a rotation here. There you go. You see, it's nice and smooth. See that? Very nice. Let's move to this end here. Just going to pull that handle out, split the distance with this control handle. See, almost equal here handles. That's what we're going to do, equal distance. And let's see here, there's a slight rotation too. Just going to rotate that. All right. Something along those lines. Okay. I don't need to spend just a few seconds here to just make sure everything's fine. As you can see, if I toggle off the visibility of the guides, this is what we have so far. Looking pretty good. And the next step is to basically mirror this, join the paths, and we are good to go. All right. Everything looks fantastic. Every curve looks very smooth. I just spend a little time just to make sure everything is great using the direct selection tool. The next step is to select the selection tool, the move tool. Select that. We're going to create, we're going to mirror this. So for that, I will right click to get to the reflect tool, double click on the reflect tool. And since we need to have a copy, keep everything as is, and then just click to copy. Switch back to the selection tool. And then click and drag and hold on the shift key as you do. And then as you go very close to it, it's going to snap. There we go. All right. So now we're going to zoom in right here. We're going to switch back to the direct selection tool. Marquee select those two endpoints. And inside the object menu, path, average, both, object menu, path, join. And we're going to do exactly the same here at the very bottom right there. Inside the object menu, path, average both, and object, path, and join those two. See that? Here it is. Now, let me toggle off the visibility of this template layer. And here is the final ornament. So we use the box method to be able to place our anchor points where the ornament touches at 90 degree angles and draw this fairly complicated design graphic. Using this technique can get you a long way mastering the pen tool. Thank you everyone for visiting my channel, learning from the inspiring lectures and project tutorials. Subscribe to get the latest and share the knowledge.